Sit down, down, sit down. Sit down and take your rest. The seed that would become the First Baptist Church of Williamsburg was planted at the start of the American Revolution. A courageous group of enslaved and free blacks defied the law to gather for evangelical worship with an itinerant black preacher named Moses. They met in secrecy on the wooded acres of Green Spring Plantation, five miles from the capital city. Succeeding Moses as the head of the church was an enslaved man belonging to James Vogue, the owner of King's Arms Tavern. His name was Gowan Pamphlet. By 1781, the church had relocated to Raccoon Chase on the outskirts of Williamsburg with Pamphlet as their spiritual leader. It was here in the early 1800s that a white townsman, a member of the Cole family, was moved by the heartfelt praise and singing he overheard. Cole offered the use of his carriage house on Nassau Street in Williamsburg to the congregation to have and to hold as long as it was used for a church. Despite Virginia's 1786 statute for religious freedom, Virginia law forbids slaves to meet in groups for any purpose without permission. Nevertheless, Pamphlet's congregation emerges from the shadows to meet unmolested on Nassau Street. To empower his church, Pamphlet petitioned for its admission into the regional Dover Baptist Association in 1791. The white-dominated organization accepted the Black Baptist Church of Williamsburg into its fold in 1793. By 1830, the African Baptist Church in Williamsburg, as it was then known, claimed over 600 members led by Reverend John Dipper. Dipper was born into slavery in 1778, but would become a master bootmaker with real estate and business interests, which allowed him to purchase freedom for himself and his family. Reverend Dipper's gifts in the way of exhortation and preaching soon found him ministering not just before the Williamsburg congregation, but in the region roundabout. But Dipper's liberty to preach the gospel wherever he saw a need would be short-lived. In August of 1831, an enslaved preacher named Nat Turner led an uprising of slaves in Southampton County, Virginia, killing dozens of whites. In the aftermath of Turner's rebellion, the meeting house on Nassau Street was closed for a year. In time, Virginia law specified that black church services could not be held without a white person present. The increased scrutiny of his church prompted Reverend Dipper to leave town. Unable to settle his affairs, he left behind real estate, slaves, and debts owed to him. In 1856, the congregation dedicated a new brick church on Nassau Street, finally replacing the aging meeting house. Thirty years later, the women's auxiliary raised money to purchase a church bell to call people to worship. The American Civil War brought unprecedented loss and upheaval to the country. In the spring of 1862, the church was confiscated by the Confederacy to serve as a hospital for rebel troops injured while fighting in the Battle of Williamsburg. When the Union Army prevailed and the Confederates retreated, the building was reclaimed by the African Baptist Church. In 1863, the church officially changed its name to First Baptist Church of Williamsburg. Following the Emancipation Proclamation in 1863, abolitionists from the Freedmen's Association in Philadelphia gained permission to open a school at the church to help former slaves acquire the education that had so long been denied to them. The Emancipation Proclamation freed slaves in rebel territories during the war, but it was the 13th Amendment to the United States Constitution passed after the war ended that finally abolished slavery throughout the land. The 14th Amendment guaranteed citizenship and equal protection under the law. And the 15th Amendment granted African-American men the right to vote. Members of First Baptist Church were quick to take advantage of their newly recognized rights by voting and by running for public office. This included the church's young minister, John Dawson. At various times during his 46 years in the pulpit, Dawson served as treasurer of the city of Williamsburg, member of the Common Council, and a member of the Virginia Senate. 
In 1926, Reverend W.A.R. Goodwin, rector of historic Bruton Parish Church, realized his lifelong dream to restore Virginia's colonial capital when John D. Rockefeller Jr. agreed to provide the financial means. The Williamsburg Holding Company began purchasing properties in the town center to proceed with the restoration. Many families, both black and white, were bought out and relocated. In the early 1940s, the benefit of keeping the church doors open seven days a week to welcome tourists was advocated by Reverend R. E. Lee. Since the church was only one block away from the colonial restoration, sharing the proud history of First Baptist Church's 18th century beginnings seemed appropriate. The restoration continued to expand. In 1954, the Williamsburg Holding Company, as Colonial Williamsburg was then known, purchased the historic property on Nassau Street for $130,000 and a clear deed to land on Scotland Street where a new church was built. In the 18th century, Gowan Pamphlet sought recognition and acceptance for his church through membership in the Dover Baptist Association, securing for his congregation the same fraternity enjoyed by their white Baptist brethren. Continuing Pamphlet's tradition, in the 1960s, Reverend David Collins championed equality and civil rights for African Americans through his work with the Virginia Christian Leadership Conference. Due to Reverend Collins' connections and influence as the Tidewater Vice President of that organization, he was able to arrange a Williamsburg visit by the recognized leader of the civil rights movement. On June 26, 1962, Dr. Martin Luther King addressed an overflowing crowd eager for social change from the pulpit of First Baptist Church. The connection between First Baptist Church and the Colonial Williamsburg Foundation continues. The story of the founding of the church is presented in an exhibit near the original site of the carriage house on Nassau Street. In commemoration of the church's 240th anniversary, the long silent church bell, purchased in 1886, has been restored to working condition by Colonial Williamsburg and is the centerpiece of 2016's National Challenge. Let freedom reign.